Hey there, my name is Peter. I'm a software engineer working on the Flow blockchain, and I'm here today to talk to you about how to get started building on Flow. So I'm on the developer experience team at Flow, and our whole goal is to make it as easy as possible for developers to build and launch applications on the Flow network. And to do that, we work with the broader Flow contributor base to build and maintain a variety of software libraries in different languages, uh, as well as frameworks that are on top of those libraries learning resources such as written documentation, tutorials, uh, a suite of developer tools, and then we also, on top of all of that, provide direct support to people who are building. So there's a lot to talk about when talking about blockchain development, but for this talk, we're going to get right into the details and talk specifically about how Flow can fit into your existing workflow as a software developer. And when I say software developer, I'm using that term um, in the broadest sense possible. I'm referring to professionals, but also hobbyists, and uh, really just anybody who's interested in writing code and deploying it to a blockchain. So I want to start with something familiar. This is the client-server application model, and um, chances are you've probably built an application that is, that is modeled like this in some way. And most applications we use today, uh, especially user-facing applications, uh, use this model as well. So uh, the, the social networks we use, uh, our streaming websites, our chat applications, the games we love, um, these days a lot of them um, compose of a client and a server uh, and then some sort of uh, database. Uh, so when I say client, I'm referring to uh, a device that's sort of owned by the user or an application running on a device um, that has a connection to a server. And typically that server is serving multiple clients at the same time and relying on a database to persist data. Um, so I'm going to show kind of how this model um, actually can, can transform and fit into a blockchain context. But before we do that, I want to give a quick definition. So a DAP is a decentralized application. And typically, a DAP stores its application state on a distributed ledger rather than a single database. And it will deploy application code that is executed in a shared peer-to-peer -peer environment rather than a single server. And we often talk about DAP development in the context of blockchain development because blockchains provide both a distributed ledger uh, and a shared peer-to-peer -peer environment, or at least most modern blockchains, uh, flow, in, flow included. And the developer experience team, uh, we, we believe that DAP development should feel just like app development uh, at the end of the day. And what we mean by that is it should be accessible. It should feel just like mobile or front-end or back-end development it should have tools and it should be approachable and, and sort of have all of the, the facets of, of what modern software development is. And to do that, it should make use of existing software development tools and best practices. So we're not trying to uh, reinvent the wheel or replace tools that, that already exist and already do their jobs well. Um, we're more, more so trying to augment existing tools and processes um, to uh, sort of work with blockchain technology. So going back to the client-server model, uh, let's see how this can, can fit with blockchain. So blockchain comes along and it says hi, uh, but before we know where it can fit, we have to talk about what it can actually do. So disclaimer, the five points here are a massive, massive simplification. There's a lot that goes into making this possible from a protocol level, uh, but to the application developer, uh, the functionality of a blockchain more or less boils down to, to these points. So you can write data to a blockchain. Typically that's done with what's called a transaction. You can later read that data. You can deploy code and execute code also inside of a transaction. And then you can authenticate users. Typically that's done with uh, asymmetric public private key pair cryptography. So you might be thinking, well, we can already do all those things. What's, what's new? Um, but what blockchain does is it makes all of the above possible in a fully shared and fully trustless environment. So here's one place where blockchain might fit. You could imagine having an existing client server application. Uh, let's say it's uh, an e-commerce website where you're selling shoes and maybe you want to start accepting blockchain as or cryptocurrency as a payment mechanism. Um, so you could incorporate a blockchain network um, for that purpose. You could connect it to your server and that would be a, a totally valid use case. Uh, you could also imagine an application where you uh, need to store data in a secure and verifiable way um, with a lot of transparency 
And if that's the case, you might use blockchain as, as your data layer because we can store data and we can, we can read it later. But you can also take it a step further. And because you can store data on a blockchain, you can execute code and you can authenticate users, you can actually, in some cases, replace your existing um, backend infrastructure with a blockchain. And um, this is kind of closest to what people uh, often refer to as a DAP, right? So in this case, we've got the client software um, and, and you probably have multiple clients connecting to the same blockchain, um, but it, because the, the backend or what used to be the backend is now fully decentralized, um, the, the app itself becomes decentralized. And that client could be a browser, it could be a mobile phone, a game console, it could be a point of sale payment system at your local corner store. It could really be any device that has an internet connection um, can be a, a blockchain client. And because in a decentralized system like this, um, there is no centralized server that's authenticating users, um, there has to be something else that, that, that sort of attests to the identity of a user and also allows a user to sort of control access to their identity and to their account. And that's where a user wallet comes in. So blockchain wallets are quite common and at the at sort of the, in the most uh, basic sense, a blockchain wallet controls access to the private keys that secure a user's blockchain account. So typically when client software is connecting to a blockchain, whenever it needs to perform an action on behalf of a user, it's going through that user's wallet. Uh, there are many different kinds of wallets. There are hardware devices like this one. Um, there's also software wallets. And uh, typically the user is, is free to choose what wallet they want to use. But what's really cool about blockchain is it can support or a blockchain uh, can support multiple client applications at the same time. So in this example, apps A, B, and C, they're all separate applications built by um, different developers, um, and they can all use the same shared database and execution environment, um, which opens up a lot of possibilities for sort of cross-app communication, uh, interoperability, and um, in my opinion, the coolest part is composability, so allowing sort of applications to, to integrate in ways that, that would otherwise be very difficult to do um, without a decentralized environment. And uh, just like the, the other example, um, typically all of these applications would be using a user's wallet to um, sort of control access to their account. And from a user's perspective, um, they can use the same wallet, they can use the same account to log into all of these applications, and they can take their data with them between applications without having to rely on sort of direct API integrations between those applications and without having to actually give those applications direct ownership over their data because the data is on the blockchain and it lives inside of their account. And that, that last piece there, that, that idea of sort of true user ownership of data, that's something that we are, um, that's fundamentally a fundamental concept on Flow and something that we are um, very excited about developing. And with all that said, now let's talk about where you can start building. So one way to start might be to read all the ins and outs and learn as much as possible about DAP development. But another way is to just fork an, exa an example and start building. And that's exactly why we built Kitty Items. So Kitty Items is a fully functional, full stack example DAP that um, you can use as a learning resource when you're starting your journey on Flow. So what it is, is it's an NFT storefront and marketplace application. Uh, heavily inspired by CryptoKitties, which is very close to our hearts. Uh, but it's also a demo of the latest tooling and the best practices for just general flow DAP development. Uh, and lastly, it's a forkable and reusable example. So you can download it, you can clone it, uh, you can uh, refactor it and remix it as much as you want. Um, it's a great place to start. And inside, it's a React web app um, that authenticates users and sends transactions using the Flow Client Library and the Blockto Wallet. So the Flow Client Library, or FCL for short, uh, it's a framework that DAP developers can use to manage that connection between the DAP and the user wallet that I was mentioning earlier. Uh, and Blockto Wallet is right now one of the most popular wallets uh, for, for general DAP development on Flow. And in addition to that React web app, there's also a REST API uh, implemented with Express.js using TypeScript uh, that parses blockchain events uh, using the Flow JavaScript SDK. So that, that portion of the example um, is a great way to kind of learn more about how to use the Flow blockchain from a server environment. 
And then lastly, the application includes smart contracts written in Cadence, uh, which I'll get into in, in a minute here. So this is what Kitty Items looks like. It is a GitHub repository. You can run through the README here, and it shows you how to install the required tools, how to create a testnet account, uh, how to deploy the application, um, including Heroku if, if you want that. Um, and then if you scroll down further, there's also a pretty in-depth overview of all the different pieces of the project and, and how they fit together. So we also wanted to highlight some of the tools that we um, we use on Flow inside of Kitty Items. So Kitty Items is compatible with the Flow emulator, which is more or less a, you can think of it as like a, a toy version of Flow that can run on your laptop or instead of your CI pipelines. Um, but it, it exposes the exact same APIs as the real Flow network, and it uses the same uh, VM and execution environment that the, the Flow network provides. Um, but it mocks out a lot of the a lot of the um, sort of distributed network components and consensus mechanisms um, to just give you a, a version of Flow that um, can be used um, quickly inside of a, a local environment without any setup. Um, in addition to that, there's a development wallet um, that simulates that user wallet component I was talking about earlier, and those two pieces together give you uh, a full local development environment that you can use for for quick iteration without having to connect to a to a live network. Um, but when you are ready to connect to a live network, you can use the Flow testnet and the Blockdo testnet wallet um, to deploy your application to a test environment um, that more or less simulates real network conditions, but doesn't have, like you don't need to spend real money, there's no fees, um, and it's a great place to um, sort of test out how your application would work in a real decentralized environment. So lastly, we can't talk about app development without talking about Cadence, the smart contract programming language for Flow. A smart contract is essentially a piece of code that you deploy to a blockchain that defines the structure of the data for your application and the ways in which that data can be used. And because smart contracts are deployed to a fully shared execution environment, uh, it's very important they work as expected and, and that they're bug free. Um, and as a smart contract developer, you wanna be very certain and very confident that the, the contracts you're writing work as expected. Um, so when we built Cadence, we built it with that in mind. We wanted to build a language that was easy to understand and therefore easy to debug, um, but also had security features built in um, that made it easy to build uh, safe and secure blockchain applications. And the best way to learn Cadence is to go to the Flow Playground. So the Flow Playground is a web-based IDE um, with very low barriers. You can more or less just open the page and start coding um, and execute Cadence code, deploy contracts, um, and do it all in a single environment. So this is what it looks like. You get five accounts to start. It's very easy to write code, deploy it, and, uh, and get on your feet. So with all that said, uh, if you're looking to read more and you do want to pour in, um, dig into the documentation, we have a, a full documentation site at docsonflow.org. It's more or less the portal for all developers who are building on Flow. So you'll find links to all of the different projects I've mentioned, as well as guides and sort of more in-depth tutorials that explain the core concepts. And lastly, uh, come say hi. We hang out on Discord. We have developer channels um, where uh, developers from around the world discuss the projects they're building on Flow. Um, and we also, the, the core members of the Flow team, we hang out there and we answer questions on, on a daily basis. And then uh, every second Friday, we have our bi-weekly office hours. You're welcome to come and hang out, ask questions, and meet other Flow developers. Um, and then if you're looking to have kind of more long-form discussions, the forum is a great place for that. Um, people often go there to uh, engage in sort of discussion around project ideas and, and um, looking for feedback from other people. Uh, that's a great place to go. So I'll leave this up on the screen in case you need to uh, get any of the links that I mentioned earlier. Um, typically at this point, I would, I would answer questions, but this is a recording. So instead, come to Discord. You can find me. Uh, my username is Pete, and uh, happy to answer any DMs and introduce you to other members of the team. Um, you are always welcome to, to come hang out and build on Flow. Thank you for the time today, and I hope you have a great day.